Hello, I'm Clovis Casali, and this is the France 24 interview. My guest today is the governor of Tokyo, Yuriko Koike, former defense and environment a minister. She sees climate change as one of the major challenges faced by the world, and she's at the forefront of leaders looking to tackle the problem. In 2020, Tokyo will be, of course, hosting the Summer Olympics, and she's vowed to deliver clean games. Yuriko Koike, thanks for being here. You're the first woman who's been elected governor of Tokyo. Have you faced a lot of criticism, difficulties because you are a woman in the world of politics in Japan? Half of Tokyo's 14 million population are women. I feel that what Tokyo and Japan need going forward are more policies and ideas proposed by women. And that's why I think I was elected governor of Tokyo with support from many female voters. On top of that, I had had administrative experience before taking on this job as defense minister and as environment minister. So I think people have trusted in me to govern a city with 14 million people and to manage a budget of 14 trillion yen which is almost the same size as Sweden's national budget. Tokyo is looking to cut by 30 percent its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. How do you intend to do that? And do you have the backing of the very powerful industrial sector in Japan and the backing of the people? We had a particularly hot summer this year, and we also suffered considerable damage from heavy rains. When I was environment minister, I called on the nation to help fight climate change, and I think I already succeeded in at least partially changing people's mindset about the problem. But I think the extraordinary heat and rainfall this summer were a wake-up call, raising people's awareness further about the dangers of climate change. However, we need to implement necessary policies to tackle the problem. One idea is the cap-and-trade scheme. We are asking companies above a certain size, like those that have their own buildings, to commit to cutting CO2 emissions through this program. They have already contributed to cutting emissions by about 26 percent over the years. We are also planning to try and accelerate the shift towards zero emission vehicles, or ZEV, through supporting research and development in the private sector, as well as giving incentives to consumers to make it easier for them to buy electricity electric or fuel cell cars. Through these programs, I hope to make progress in the fight against climate change inside the megalopolis Tokyo. Let's talk about the C40 cities, a coalition of major players like Paris, New York, Tokyo, of course. Are we seeing big cities take the leadership in defending uh, the environment? And what can you actually achieve if uh, governments don't follow? Well, to help large cities around the world to come together to implement measures against climate change and to share their knowledge and experience, we have indeed established a group called C40. Tokyo, New York, Paris and London are among its members, and Paris's mayor, Anne Hidalgo, is the current president. I'm the vice president. Well, there are several vice presidents, and the governor of Tokyo is one of them. It is believed that solutions found in solving problems in large cities will lead to finding solutions on a global scale, and that by sharing knowledge and experience among themselves, big cities will help bring changes to the planet itself. Recently, some have started arguing that cooperation among major cities is more effective than cooperation on a global scale. As I said earlier, in Tokyo, we are trying to promote zero-emission vehicles and drive a shift from gasoline-run engines to 
electric-powered motors. To do this, we have set a target to have eco-friendly cars, like electric vehicles, make up 50% of new car sales by 2030. We are providing incentives to people and businesses to help achieve this goal. This means investing in infrastructure, such as installing more electric and hydrogen charging stations, as well as giving R&D support for companies and financial incentives to consumers. I would like to create a Tokyo model in promoting cleaner cars. So you're seen as a pro-American figure in Japan. What do you think of Donald Trump's skepticism in tackling climate change, with him, of course, pulling out of the Paris Agreement on Climate? The city of Tokyo considers it profoundly regrettable that he thinks that way. Whether it's on a country-to-country -country level or among cities, I think that effort to tackle global warming or climate change requires the participation of all parties in order to find a meaningful solution. I find it highly regrettable that the leader of the United States, a country that produces uses large amounts of CO2, decided to pull out of the Paris Agreement. On the other hand, at local levels, leaders like the mayor of New York and the governor of the state of California are separately making a lot of efforts towards climate change. So I think increasing cooperation at a city-to-city -city level is a realistic way to move things forward. Plastic pollution is a major problem, of course, around the world, notably for oceans. It's a very serious issue for you. You were a pioneer uh, raising awareness years ago on plastic pollution. What are the policies you're actually carrying out in Tokyo? Ocean pollution, especially plastic pollution, is drawing a lot of attention these days. Efforts are being made to turn to alternatives, such as using paper straws, but unfortunately, it's still quite costly to do that. On the other hand, in my experience, efforts such as recycling printing paper in offices lead to lowering costs if they're done on a larger scale. By creating a circular economy in society as a whole, we can gradually lower the cost of recycling. Going forward, if we develop better technology to do things on a larger scale, if you take the example of straws, by producing more paper straws, the cost will be lowered. And if consumers change their mindset and start refusing straws in the first place, I think the situation regarding plastic pollution will improve little by little. One of the purposes of my visit to Paris this time was something to do with this. We organized an event at the Paris City Hall to promote furoshiki. Now, furoshiki is a traditional wrapping cloth in Japan. We use this square piece of cloth to wrap and carry everything, from a bottle of wine, a baguette, to even grapes. And it's reusable, and it's also a piece of art. I'm promoting the use of furoshiki as an example of how people can contribute to the environment in a fun way. Here in France, single-use plastic bags have already been banned, and I hope efforts to reduce plastic in an enjoyable way will expand around the world. So you have a strong relationship with uh, Annie Delgo, who's the mayor of Paris. You're hosting the uh, Summer Olympics in 2020, Paris in 2024. Do you talk with her about the problems you might have encountered, mistakes not to make? 
So, this is what I'm hoping to pass on the legacy of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics to the 2024 Paris Games. With this in mind, the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, and myself, the governor of Tokyo, have signed an agreement. The text includes commitment to cooperate in the organization of the Olympic and Paralympic Games, as well as more generally in sports, culture, and environmental protection. In Tokyo, with less than two years to go, we are accelerating our preparations for the Games. We are facing challenges such as managing traffic and coping with the heat. It's a chronic problem, but it's also proving to be a new challenge. We are also aiming to bring the level of CO2 emissions during the event down to zero. That's just one of the things that we will try to do. We'd like to pass on our experience to Paris so that efforts like that will continue to be made at the Olympics. Let me give you an example of what we're planning to do at the Tokyo Games. There will be around 5,000 medalists who will be awarded gold, silver and bronze medals. To make these medals, we're going to extract the material, gold, silver and bronze, from used mobile phones. We're going to collect old phones, dismantle them and make medals out of them. This is perhaps the best example of an effective use of our natural resources. Mayor Hidalgo also made a personal contribution. She gave me a few of her old handsets. Yuriko Koike, thank you so much for coming here to see us in our studios in Paris. It's the end of the France 24 interview. See you soon. Since August, the North Kivu region in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo has been hit by the worst Ebola epidemic the country has ever known. Locals forced to flee because of attacks by armed groups are now spreading the virus throughout the region. Doctors work in dangerous conditions that hinder their efforts to get the epidemic under control. France 24 reports on the race against the clock to fight Ebola in a war zone. Reporters on France 24 and France24.com.